Hi guys, Harry and Hugo here, and today we have an interesting, hotly debated topic, which is meal timing and frequency. This is the fourth part in our five part series on nutritional priorities, so let's get into it. As always with the Progression Podcast, we're gonna talk about what's optimal, where most people are at right now, and we're gonna give you some actual practical advice to help you take one step towards your goal. Now, the perfect or optimal stance on meal timings is hotly debated. You've probably heard of don't eat after 6 p.m. You've probably heard of intermittent fasting. You've probably also heard of five to six meals a day. You've heard of three square meals. This is so hotly debated. I'm not even gonna try and tell you which one is optimal because there isn't an, yeah. there isn't an optimal. There might be in terms of um, nutrient delivery, in terms of those really pinnickety factors, but again, all of those things are subjective based on your current goal. There's no one way that's optimal for everybody. Everything, no. every, everyone's individual with this. Absolutely, so we're gonna just ask the question, I'll ask you, Hugo, yeah. um, what, is the common place for most people. I'd say there's probably two stereotypes we see. I'd say one of them is you've got your three square meals, you get up, have breakfast, you go to work, you've got your lunch break, you eat at lunch, and then you get home, you have dinner, and then you probably have some snacks after dinner before you go to bed. Yeah. And then I think you've got the people who skip breakfast as well. So then yep. you still get lunch, dinner, and some snacks, but you've missed out breakfast. Sk- skipping breakfast is so, so common, yeah. and it's hotly debated. So, as with the Progression Podcast, we're going to go from those two basic templates and we're going to give you some input on ways in which perhaps they can be improved now as we've already said meal timing and frequency is totally subjective so the best advice that we can give is for you guys to experiment so you're going to want to take a look at your week as a whole your day as a whole and really be objective and analyze how you perform so we'll we'll do hugo now so hugh yeah um do you have breakfast yes yeah, how well, I, I have quite a big breakfast. How are you if you don't? Terrible, <laughs> terrible, <laughs> terrible. I got I, I struggle to function on a. I think before, like when I was at school, I used to struggle to eat breakfast. Yeah. I, I, it used to make me feel a little bit sick in the morning to eat. Yeah. But um, now I, I kind of just pushed through and just ate, ate for a bit because it's the most important meal of the day. <laughs> but <laughs> but um, now now I'm at the point where if I don't have a big a big breakfast in the morning I, I i struggle to get to i struggle to get to my next meal yeah and i was exactly the same i used to skip breakfast i'd even sometimes skip lunch like mm. i'd go almost an entire day without eating uh, but now i feel i feel sick if i don't eat yeah. like i wake up hungry mm. um but i've trained that and i've changed that and the reason why was because my, the demands of my day meant i needed fuel yeah. so we were up and training people early in the morning and you can't you can't do that when you're dizzy and hungry. And I think from this aspect is if you're you had to fo- you started focusing on your calorie intake. So yeah. if you're not eating till after lunchtime, you're going to struggle to get the amount of calories in you need. Which is kind of I think is a comforting thing about meal timings is if you've worked out if you've started to focus and count your calories and macros, which is what we spoke about before, the meal timings does kind of just fall in have, yeah. like, fall into place for you as an individual so for Hugo right now um, I, I'm quizzing you but I yeah. know what you eat anyway yeah. but for you right now your calories are so high yeah. and your macronutrient requirement is so high mm-hmm. that if you were to skip breakfast you probably couldn't even eat that much food no. within sh- such a short window no I'd struggle whereas let's say it was perhaps on uh, going the other way and he was trying he was very calorie restricted mm-hmm. um if he ate his first meal at six o'clock in the morning, he might then have the whole day where he's having to hold himself back. Yeah. So perhaps then an intermittent fasting approach could could better yeah, suit yeah. you where you get to more more towards lunchtime. Um, maybe just have a small shake for yeah. breakfast instead of a, a full meal. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's where it becomes very, very individual and very objective. And at this, at this point, it's worth having a coach. Yeah. This is where coaches come in handy. Um, because food's quite an emotional thing for everyone um, and it's tough to be objective about your own food intake it's tough to be objective about your performance um, and to really analyze it so I think you can get great results and a great with focusing on 
calories, macros, and if you're starting to focus on the meal timing aspect of it, you are trying to get to that next level, that other yeah. level, which is why a coach would be e- easier. Yeah, exactly. Um, so remember with these videos, we're doing them in order of importance. So you've got calories first, macronutrients second, micronutrients third, then you wanna worry about your meal timing and frequency. And it sort of does right itself, mm-hmm. but the general guidance that we will leave you guys with is be very objective and very evaluative yeah. and try and work out how you feel during the day. Um, and if how you feel, it marries up with your meal timing and frequency, and you've got your calories, your macronutrients, and your micronutrients sorted, then you've done very, very well.